We're here today with Justine Whipple on top of beautiful Taquitz Peak. Uh, Justine went to the Naval Academy, got to lead Marines for almost 10 years and did some stuff with the Special Operations. Then she went to the Crystal Group, did leadership development, and now we're super stoked to have her help guide for us. So Justine, welcome to our office. Thanks, Knight. Appreciate it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and thank you for the amazing day today. Yeah. What's your leadership philosophy? How do you approach leading people? Man, it's, a, it's something I've taken a bit of time to refine and I've got a long way to go. But uh, I'd say that for me, I always think about the golden rule first, which is always think about the way that I want to get treated. And um, if you use that as your steady point, then I can kind of guide off of that. And so often we think that leadership is just something where you're just pushing it. You know, you're doing, you're mm -hmm. doing leadership to people. Um, but my leadership philosophy is so much of listening and learning from others to enable those. It's harder to do than it is to say for sure. Um, but I think the experiential things like we're doing today, um, you learn about yourself, you learn about the people that you're around, uh, and then you know how people click and everybody needs something different. And, uh, and knowing and recognizing that is still super important. Awesome. So meeting people where they are and treating people like you'd want to be treated. It sounds simple and like you say, really, really hard. So what are your core values and how do those play into that philosophy? Core values. You know, I would say that it's a little bit generic, but trust is absolutely, you know, everything we do, if you can say there's other values about respect, which is super important as well, um, but building trust, which is something that you have to do through repetition and um, you have to do it through integrity. You need to do it through benevolency um, and you need to do it through action. Um, so I really believe that, you know, I'm, I build trust by being reliable or I build trust through transparency and honesty. And I screw up a lot of things, especially as a leader and you're always on the front stage. But if you can't take those falls and, and go with it and learn from that, um, then you're not very authentic. And so for me, that piece of trust, building trust with the people that I'm working with and around, and then the authenticity is really the, the avenue and the vehicle that I take to, to build that trust. Because, um, you know, I, I know I have a lot of imperfections and I know there's gonna be things along the way that people, something that somebody's gonna do that's gonna frustrate me. I'm gonna do something that isn't quite right. Um, but. If we're, if we're gonna work as a team and we're gonna work as a cohesive unit, we've gotta be willing to accept those, learn from them and carry on. So absolutely for me is trust and um, authenticity is really important. Awesome, and they kind of build on each other and, and being authentic is kind of your philosophy, right? Like people know who you are. You've done Mount Rainier, you've done some big mountains, you have started skiing backcountry, which is awesome. We're stoked about that. And now we're, you know, seven pitches, 900 feet up on Taquitz. What do you take away from the outdoors? How does it help you lead better? The outdoors is where I clear my mind. I, you know, it's, there are so many things I get caught up in and I am a, I'm a person who likes to be productive or I like to be busy. The outdoors makes me take that pause. Um, it makes me respect whether it's the grander um, or it's the challenge. The outdoors is always a humbling place to be because it's always bigger than you. Whether I'm on the water, um, I'm on the mountains, it, it doesn't matter on the, a giant glacier. It's always very humbling and I think always keeping that into perspective is, is super important. Fresh air is also the best thing that you can do for sanity. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just love it. I love getting out here, the sunshine. You feel better, you interact better, you're just better to people, um, all of those things. And those moments when your gut clenches up and you start feeling that adrenaline um, and you feel that nerves, you know, it feels so good on the back end because you know you've worked through something and you've accomplished something that you may, didn't know that you were gonna be able to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't even mention you're basically a pro triathlete and, you know, you do a lot of cycling and running uh, and that's absolutely outdoor activity, too. What do you take from that? Sure. Well, the uh, the pro triathlon piece is a little bit in the past, but I've learned a lot from it. Um, I learned as much about traveling the world with that piece as I did athletics itself. Um, but I think the discipline to to show up every day. And it doesn't mean that you're gonna have a PR every day. Um, and it doesn't mean that you're gonna beat everyone because you're always gonna get into a higher pool. You're always gonna be a, a big fish in a little pool or a little fish in a big pool. 
Uh, but I think that des that discipline about why you're there and refocusing and regrounding yourself on, you know, I'm I'm here to be the best that I can be that day, and I just need to show up. And um, and the discipline is is a lot of it's patience too. It's knowing and it's trusting the process because. Nobody becomes super talented or super great at something right away. I mean, there's talented people out there, but they still have to work their butts off. So um, for me, the athletic piece is, is bringing people together um, to work and then holding each other accountable. And that's where, you know, I found probably the most impactful piece of my life now is those people like whether I'm informally coaching, um, I'm going out for a run with somebody. It doesn't have to be a race. It can just be an event where we're going to go out there and we're going to sweat yeah. And we're going to hurt a little bit, and then, and then, you know, we're going to go enjoy and sleep well afterward. Yeah, nothing, nothing worth doing isn't a little bit painful, I think. What's your relationship with flow, with all the cycling, running, mountaineering? Surely you've experienced flow out here. What's your relationship with it? A tough one. It's hard. It's really hard for me. Um, I think I resist it. You know, mm. my tendency is to, is to fight. Um, it's to always seem to make things a little bit more challenging than they need to be. But I would say that out of all the places, the mountains have incredibly changed my view. Um, probably mountaineering is, is where I found my, my true flow, mm -hmm. um, where you, your heart is feeling like in this rhythm with everything outdoors. You have balanced this, you know, the stress, with also like the confidence that you, cause you know you showed up fit, you know, when you know it's gonna be tough, but you know that you're prepared. Um, and so respecting nature, respecting where you came, coming prepared both, both like physically um, and then like, you know, just even your gear, that's really important to flow because if you're have anxiety about something you didn't prepare right or you didn't bring the right things, you're, you're never gonna find in that flow state. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, Flow is, is really hard because it requires so much focus, but it's that focus that isn't deliberate. Um, it's that focus that just sucks you in. So that's mm -hmm. why I love it out here in the mountains because it just sucks me in. And if I, just let, if I just let it go at that moment, it's so hard to do, but that's when I find my flow. And it doesn't happen all that often. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, it's an amazing feeling when you get it. For sure, for sure. So last question, someone who at any level of leadership is trying to become a more excellent leader, what's a piece of advice for them? Probably the toughest question. Um, yeah. I think, you know, my advice is you're, if you think you made it, you did. <laughs> um, you know, leadership is, is asking questions. It's exploring. Mm. Um, it's always thinking like there's more knowledge out there to get and I have learned just so much on how to lead just by asking the people around me about what they're doing or why they do something. Don't be afraid to ask those, um, those, like, cu those curious questions. And it's a balance, right? You don't want to yeah. be the guy that, or the gal that shows up with 200 questions. But for me, leadership is, is truly understanding what you need to accomplish and so setting that is really important, but then understanding that those people that you're working with are the most important asset. There's lots of, you know, whether you're in a factory or you're outside, it doesn't matter because there's lots of important things. Your gear is really important. Um, you know, the process and mechanisms are really important. But at the end of the day, like people matter. And when you get frustrated and you want to throw in the towel, um, that's the time to step back ask the questions. I bet you somebody has the answer and it's just out there. Yeah. Um, so that's my, my, my small bit of advice for, for anyone looking for it. Awesome. R really good advice. Well, thank you so much for coming out and enjoying this day and doing an interview on top of Talk Eats. And uh, let's pick our way down this mountain. Awesome night. Thank you so much. This has been fantastic. <laughs> Woo.